Please bow your heads and agree with me in prayer. Almighty God, everlasting Father, tonight again we come to you in the name, above all names, the name of Jesus. Uh, the name at which every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess uh, that thou art Lord. Father, tonight recognize your greatness. Blessed be your holy name. You spoke, Lord, the words, uh, and the universe came into being. The sun, uh, the moon, uh, and the stars. From the dust of the earth, Lord, of formed man, and you breathed into man uh, the breath of life, uh, and man became a living soul. And for that reason tonight we are here to rejoice in thee, in thy greatness. Uh, Father, we thank you for what we have been receiving uh, throughout uh, the past sessions. Uh, and we thank you, O Lord, uh, for what we are yet uh, to receive. Uh, and as we come again uh, at this time, Lord, uh, going into another session, uh, I pray, O oh, Father, that we will prepare our hearts, uh, Lord, to receive uh, of what thou hast in store for us. Uh, open up our hearts, O oh, Lord. Uh, help each, every, each one of us uh, to turn our cups up tonight. Uh, blessed Father, enter your heart to receive from thee. Lord, I pray at this time uh, that we just captivate our hearts uh, and reign in us. Uh, let nothing, Lord, of self uh, be seen tonight, uh, but just let the Holy Spirit uh, take control uh, of the rest of the service. Uh, precious Father, there may be some here tonight, uh, Holy Father, going through trouble sometimes. Uh, testings, Lord, uh, but help them to realize uh, that thy greatness, Lord, the power which thou hast uh, is able to give freedom and victory tonight. Uh, Lord, we pray again uh, for the speaker, Lord, as we come in forward uh, further on in this service, uh, that we'll anoint him, Lord, uh, with such power, power to save, power to heal, power to deliver, power to set free. Thank you again tonight uh, as we open our hearts, Lord, uh, to receive from thee. And we say thanks. Uh, leave ourselves into your hands uh, to be used as pliably in your hands tonight, like clay, Father, in the potter's hand. In the name of Jesus, we ask it. Amen. Remain standing. Don't sit yet. Remain standing. Coming now to read for us is Denise. Hale. She'll be reading from Acts chapter 2, verses 22 through 35. The scripture reading is taken from Acts chapter 2, from verse 22 to 35. Can we all stand to the reading of God's words, please? I'll read while you follow. Ye men of Israel, hear these words. Jesus of Nazareth, a man approved of God among you by miracles and wonders and signs, which God did by him in the midst of you, as ye yourselves also know. Him being delivered by the determinate counsel and foreknowledge of God, ye have taken and by wicked hands have crucified and slain, whom God hath raised up, having loosed the pains of death, because it was not possible that he should be holden of it. For David speaketh concerning him, I foresaw the Lord always before my face, for he is on my right hand, that I should not be moved. Therefore did my heart rejoice, and my tongue was glad, Moreover, also my flesh shall rest in hope, because thou wilt not leave my soul in hell, neither wilt thou suffer thine holy one to see corruption. Thou hast made known to me the ways of life, thou shalt make me full of joy with thy countenance. Men and brethren, let me freely speak unto you of the patriarch David, that he is both dead and buried, and his sepulchre is with us unto this day. Therefore, being a prophet, and knowing that God had sworn with an oath to him that of the fruit of his loins, according to the flesh, he would rise up Christ to sit on his throne. He, seeing this before, spake of the resurrection of Christ, that his soul was not left in hell, neither his flesh did see corruption. This Jesus, hath God raised up, 
whereof we all are witnesses. Therefore, being by the right hand of God exalted, and having received of the Father the promise of the Holy Ghost, he hath shed, he hath said, sorry, he hath shed forth this which ye now see and hear. For David is not ascended into the heavens, but he saith, him, he saith himself, The Lord said unto, me, unto my Lord, Sit thou on my right hand, until I make thy foes thy footstool. Here endeth the reading of God's words. We'll all say together, Amen. Your love, 
Friday night with the word of God coming from his servant truly God has spoken to us and tonight he's going to speak to us again I said to some people today never since I've been saved for 20 odd years had I heard such a brilliant exposition on the doctrine of God as I had heard last night God certainly spoke to us and I know that tonight he's going to use his servant again to speak to us. Reverend Joel Edwards is a man sent from God. Not only is a man sent from God, he's a man sent to speak to the youth of this church. I certainly believe that. He is a youth man. Do you believe that? He's a youth man. He's an example for many or all of us to follow. Reverend Joel Edwards is coming to us now to bring the word as God has given it to him. Let us stand to receive God's servant. Hallelujah. Bless you. Thank you so much. You may be seated. How do you do? <clears throat> I have been enormously blessed <clears throat> by the ministry in music, haven't you? Yes. From all that's been happening up here in terms of song leading, musicianship, and the mass choir. But um, one gentleman I really love and admire, Master Ron. 
I like Ron. Ron is my main man. I like Ron. Ron doesn't make much noise. He just lets others do it. I hope you had a chance to hear of the Ministry of the Afro-African Caribbean Evangelical Alliance this afternoon. It's my little plug. It's a very important part of the work which God has given to us. And I would want to ask you for your prayerful support in that. If you can join us, and I'm not going to do a long plug because it was done before, I just want to underscore that and ask if you can join us in prayer and practical support. We're going to be very blessed by that. And then I think I would like to say something else. I have been enormously blessed over these last two or three days simply by you. I think it's proven something which I have sometimes wondered about. And it's a very basic principle in life, I guess, which one tries to govern their life by, that if you respect people, they have a way of respecting you in return. Some of you have known me from my short trouser days. Some of you have known me more recently. But I have been so blessed and challenged just to walk around and feel that Although I, ha I am one of you, and among you, and from you, you have given me the privilege and the respect which I feel anybody from elsewhere would have obtained. And I want to thank you for that. I feel your prayers, both those from the same place I go to church, and others who are around. I just want to let you know that my heart is filled with tremendous gratitude for your respect and your love and your prayers. Many people have the chance of seeing my face from time to time, for good or ill. Uh, and there's another face behind the face which they don't often see. She normally prefers it that way. And I'll probably have to answer for this later on. But I would like to ask Carol just to just to jump up. Come out here a little bit. And just to say, this is my more acceptable face. <laughs> Love you to just pray for her. She's been a tremendous support. We have two children knocking around the place somewhere. And uh, I'd probably ask them to wave, but another time. We'll do the family business next time. Thank you, dear. Amen. Um, uh, uh, what did you say the theme was? Jesus is No, just do it one time. Strong, really strong. Some people can't count. It would appear that others fail CSC maths as well as me. Um, can I support what God did this morning? That's a silly thing to say, but you understand. Through our National Youth and Sea Director. It takes an awful lot to give up the prime spot in a national youth convention and to close your notes and to move out the way. Yes. A lot of preachers in the same circumstances will hold on to the note paper like it's their last will and testimony. But the man just gave way to God. 
and we appreciate him for that and while we were there rejoicing the Lord uh, did a number on me I have a I have a I have a kind of methodical mind it's not always obvious I know but my mind tends to work in sequences so I had a nice little sequence to preach so tonight having done Jesus is last night we wanted to do Jesus is Lord tonight but I felt the Lord switching me around a little and brought Monday into Sunday and we're going to try and preach on what again oh yes Jesus <laughs> sometimes preachers forget you know do you know that sometimes I I have to think about what I preached on Sunday night and it's only Wednesday A bad situation that's why God has to remind people time and again time and again you see we can forget to anyway as I was saying tonight we're going to preach on Jesus is in you do you know the song rain in me are the musicians around maestros give them a hand as they come in here sovereign lord rain in me let's do that together a couple of times and then we'll share the word wave your hands and say hello to jesus Hallelujah to him tonight. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you.
I would like to read from Ephesians chapter 3. Ephesians 3. And verse 17. Let's start from verse 16. Ephesians. If you're not so familiar with your Bible, that's the New Testament after the Gospels. If you hit Revelation, you're too far right. Please don't be worried about it. If you're a new Christian and you can't find it quick, don't get embarrassed, all right? If you're not sure, look in the index. Don't feel ashamed. Some of the folks who got it first time, it's just because maybe that's the book they've always read. They don't know any other books. Don't worry about it. Um, I pray, this is the New International Version, that out of his glorious riches, he may strengthen you with power through his spirit in your inner being, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. And I pray that you, being rooted and established in love, may have power together with all the saints, to grasp how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ and to know this love that surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled to the measure of the fullness of God. Now unto him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine according to his power that is at work within the angels oh sorry uh what's that all right that is within us well i was reading um a book uh, recently sometimes I do that and it was a man called Sidney Cave called the Christian estimate of man and he the book said something which I hadn't really given much consideration to before but actually made a great deal of sense in that he said most theorists and thinkers who have transformed society have had one basic common element in their thinking and the thing which binds them together and has made them more effective than anything else has been their view of man or let's say mankind And that's very important, really, because it is what we think about ourselves and how we relate to the reality of our own existence, which God is also very preoccupied about. And so if you ask different people from different walks of life, what is your estimate or evaluation or understanding of mankind? You may get a variety of responses. I was discussing with a couple of us were discussing just this week gone a biological definition of human beings which classifies us as animal or mammal. Well, I don't have any arguments with biologists, and I don't think God has particularly either with a discipline. But I would want to suggest that a definition like that bypasses the fundamental principles about our existence and so that even if we have to use those terminologies in the exam room or in our profession we should never ever 
uh, leave behind the divine perspective. I think it was about five years ago I heard a professor, I don't know quite which discipline he would come under, perhaps something like a microbiologist or something, um, and he was, he was saying that he was into new frontiers and finding a cure for a new disease by which he was going to use either the liver or the spleen of a pig. And then there was a massive public outcry and this guy got very offended. He couldn't understand why other people weren't too keen on borrowing spare parts from a pig. And so he said, after all, biologically, we're only upright pigs. Well, I thought to myself, he should really talk for himself. Because I eat pig. <laughs> if I got desperate enough and nobody else would play with me, I might play with a pig in a pig pen. But I don't live with pig. <laughs> if you ask uh, an existentialist, someone who believes in the authority of personal existence. In other words, as we said last night, the existentialist philosophy, and really, we mustn't be afraid of these words. You agree? Yes. Don't be afraid of words. Don't feel anybody's pulling anything on anybody because we use words with more than three syllables. We gotta dump that kind of mentality. <laughs> gotta dump it. Right, I feel better about using the word now. <laughs> An existentialist basically says, what you feel, what is right for you, is good enough. There are no absolute values. Your own self-existence is the authentic mode of operation, the authentic measurement. Picked up a quote once, a definition of man, which says this, that man is nothing more than a mass of swirling electrons from a limitless mold. That means you're just a bundle of energy from some unspecified energy source. If you ask an evolutionist, she might say that we are just the product of a miracle of nature with a small m and a large N in that we have reached a certain point of our development and who knows where we will end up in another billion years from now. If you ask the social psychologist, he or she might say, well, we are the product of our environment. We are the product of our parents. Freud, for example, would tell us that we are the product of our sexual existence, in a nutshell. And I'm sure if you took time, you could find some more categories of people who would have some rather interesting definitions about who you are. But then if you ask God, what is your definition about humanity? After all, if you want to know about the Ford, ask the man who made it. So God, what is mankind all about? He would say that a long time ago, on the edge of human history, 
I stooped in the ground, I pulled dust together. I did the first and most magnificent sculpt in history. And I formed man from the dust of the ground. By the way, that's pretty accurate stuff. They tell me that our skin changes completely every seven or eight weeks. It's always falling off. You thought the snake had problems, eh? They tell me 80% of household dust comes from body skin. So when you're dusting your house, you're dusting yourself down. when he made man he breathed into him and man became a living person suke soul um, he made us in his image and likeness you know that doesn't mean literally our fingers and toes and so on, eyes and ears, nose, stuff like that. It's the express reflection of the nature of God which breathed immortality into mortality. So that when you become a Christian, it doesn't give you immortal life. It just decides where you spend immortal life. Immortality comes with birth. That's the miracle of birth. To sin a man and Christian woman. You were a miracle at birth. I don't understand where God did that. At what point in that miracle in my mother's womb, body and soul and spirit mesh together in an indissoluble unit. I don't understand that. What? Do you make of man, Mr. Psalmist, when I consider the work of your hands, the stars and the moon, Psalm 8, I paraphrase, what is man that you are mindful of him and the son of man that you visit him? For you have made him a little lower than the angels. Angels? Well, 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 not really, actually. The word really is Elohim. Elohim is the singular for God. It's one of the most common names for God. It's not like Jehovah. Or Yahweh, Elohim is a very common name. Even the gods of the Philistines in the Bible are often called the Elohim. And what the psalmist is saying is, this is really incredible stuff really when you think about it. You have made him a little lower than the heavenly beings or than a God type person. When God looks at you, he does not see an upright pig or a sophisticated monkey. He doesn't. When I preach, I try not to blast away at science because that's stupidness. It's just as ignorant as an ignorant scientist but as Christians we got to get the balance right you know and we've got to start seeing through the eyes of God now the fall came along and tarnished the image of God in us the image became defaced but not destroyed my sinner friend that's why sometimes still you sit in church 
I mean, something begins to pound in your spirit. Your knees get wobbly and your head swell and you feel faint or you feel something pulling you. You know what that is? It's the image of God in you trying to pull you back to your original source of life. Deep calls to deep. Amen to Jesus. That's why the gospel can reach you and make you uncomfortable when you just run away with the insurance man from your door. Move, there aren't no windows. The window man ever make put you under pressure? Of course not. You just tell him, sorry, I don't want any PVC window. Somebody else opens a Bible to you and said, God so loved the world that he gave his only son. And your heart miss a beat. You sit in church, the same church you despise because they clap hand and go on funny. But when altar call time come, you want to go home. It's the image of God. It's the God talk to the spirit of man, to the soul of a woman saying, come back home. Backslider. That's why you still circle convention. It's not just a social gathering. Every convention you buzz around. Yes, I know you know the runnings, you know what's gonna happen, you know the feel, you know the you're watching who's gonna jump first and who's gonna drop and but deep inside your spirit, you know there's a clock ticking. I wonder why you're burning up so much energy in resisting. Jesus said to Paul, it's hard for you to kick against the brick. I put it there myself. Glory. Thank you, Jesus. God didn't give us his image for nothing. Amen. You feeling the Lord's presence? Well, redemption came to redeem. But it came to redeem the whole lot. Uh, Jesus' death was a physical death, as we've been hearing so much recently, and it impacts us physically. Do you know that many of us need a redemption in our bodies, I don't just mean physical healing. I mean a healing in our perception about how we see ourselves. Our, a lot of us reject the body idea because of all kinds of reasons. I suppose one reason we reject the body is a misunderstanding of what the Bible is really saying about the body. The idea that the body is therefore is corrupt nasty, hopeless, rubbish, so just throw it aside and we warn each other about the body, don't we? Yes, we should because the Bible does. The Bible speaks with caution about the flesh. When the Bible speaks about the flesh, it is talking of the tendencies of our fallen nature, not your born and the structure of your physical being. It's talking about a nature of sin, which has a tendency to slide in the gutter at the least opportunity it gets. And that's what the Bible is always trying to restrain from making you slide under the gutter. But the Bible also has a wonderfully glorious opinion of the body. The idea that the body is rubbish was something around in early church history. Some folks said, well, the body is only matter. God 
doesn't matter about the matter of our body. So what we do in the body don't matter. I was trying not to say matter again. That's, that would look bad on paper. And so because they said the body doesn't matter, you can do anything you want with it. You can have an orgy. You know what an orgy is? It's not a misspelling of Audrey. Orgy. Um, and in some churches, you actually had people who felt that using up the body in this way, sleeping around, they actually in some places have had temple prostitutes. That's why Corinthian was such a bad place. In the temple, they had prostitution on demand as a part of the worship. And that's why Paul had a rough time with the people in Corinth and had to teach them how to make a distinction as to how they use their body separate from the world. So God doesn't want you to treat your body like it doesn't matter. It matters to God. So get rid of that theology, will you? Others are not keen on their bodies because of the things you have done in your body. I am going to. Just in case you're wondering, that is not my mother. <laughs> Except in the Lord. Don't you have to carry your family for support, you know? In counseling situations, you can actually talk to people who say, I'm too nasty. When I think of the life I led before I became a Christian, how can God, how can God dwell in me? When I think of the thing which has gone on inside me, how I've slept around, how I've just abused my body, how can God ever inhabit me again? And even some folks who are Christian sitting in church, there may be some folks here right now you have been doing things in your body and that's why your worship is defective because you know as soon as worship begins you you feel bad you feel terrible you, nobody knows but you're condemned under the floorboards with guilt and shame and so when everybody's singing into my chambers be free Holy Spirit the front door lock <laughs> and so our bodies become no go zones so some people are so stiff in worship cardboard By that time, church is over. <laughs> We're not laughing at you because only you know what's in your heart. We're not laughing at you. We're telling you that God is here to tell you something else about your body. Some folks don't feel God can have anything to do with them, not because of what you've done, but what has been done to you. Amen. We want to deal with that a little more tomorrow, but let me just stop here. I think it's almost impossible to be in a church environment or any environment where some young woman wasn't molested by somebody. Mother, auntie, granny, young girl. There's some people holding some serious memories. 
Amen. And your view of yourself and your body is low. Amen. I was talking to a young man one time who was telling me how he had been raped. He wasn't in church of God, somewhere else, so don't start guessing where I go to church. There's a young guy who had been raped, molested, started going out on the streets. And during that week of meetings, you know, every time we had a counseling session, he was there. The guy was broken up. And when you said to him, Jesus loves you, he don't understand the language. You put your arms on him and say, Jesus loves you. Cringe. So you think that because you reject you, God rejects you. But we're sin abound. Grace. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. The deeper the sin, the richer the blood. Glory. Glory. But don't when you buy your new house, if you don't like the color scheme, you go down the shop, DIY, buy your Dulux, grab your paintbrush, paint up. Amen. I want you to know, in your body, when you get saved, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. There is a special store on a hill. Hey. Thank you, Jesus. Where somebody's blood from the pool. Oh. Jesus. And for 2,000 years, he has been dipping his brush and painting lives. Woo! Let God restore your body because he loves you with it. Wave your hands and say praise him. And he wants to restore. He wants us, that's why he wants us to look after our bodies. Let me just take a bit of my time here and say, um, God doesn't thank you if you walk around the place with dry head and say you're suffering for the kingdom. Misery. You know, always must look like you just wake up because you're a Christian. Fix up and look good. Let me try not to get myself in trouble because I'm in enough trouble already. <laughs> they only gave me the ordination certificate less than a year, better behave. But, some ladies you don't know what the hair look like till you go to their house. <laughs> Pretty people. Anyway, that's another business. <laughs> don't misquote me. Bishop isn't here. I don't want him to take my paper. Put me out of executive. <laughs> I am not telling you to walk around and look like a Christmas tree. And 
négociation. A dit que c'est ça. A dit que tu dis que chaque fois que tu marches, tu dois jingle. A dit que c'est ça aussi. But I said, come on now, let's look good. Amen. Amen. And let us stop judging one another just by how we look. I'll tell you something from up here, it's interesting to see who clapped for which sentence. <laughs> You can clap every time. But the days must soon come and pass when you look at somebody and say, You're not safe. Because of the outside. All right, let's go back to this business now. Because our bodies is what God is interested in. Sometimes um, we do have to practice restraint, you know. Christian young people. Let me just drop this one on you while it's in my heart. Because when I've been about 15, I've been coming to this place. All right? So I know about the the pre-convention shopping. <laughs> so what we're saying then, look good, be all right, but then still be stewards then. Eh? If we get to the stage where everybody has to spend six months salary before they come to convention, we have a problem. You get the convention, Sandra. You get at the convention. Oh no, no, I can't go. What's the matter, love? What's the matter? I've got nothing to wear, have I? And the wardrobe bulging. Then it cost 50 pounds. Oh, I wore that last year. <laughs> and besides, Monica have one just the same. <laughs> in, in, am I wasting time? This is really not what I've come to talk about. <laughs> One year I came here to convention, when I was about, well, whenever, and <laughs> all of us guys came in, because there, there was a kind of a little posse from Wilsden Church, where I come from. That's the Wilsden people. And we, bless you. And we came, <laughs> I came to convention one Sunday, and I was, I was in school for a long time, so I really couldn't afford much. Things haven't changed that much, Mark, Mark you, but still. Um, by the way, you like my suit? My yeah. best jacket, you know. And that morning, I, 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 was in, I was in school for so long, I think I must have been in third year six. All my friends said, boy, are you going to become a grandfather in school? So I came, I pulled up my best suit, came convention Sunday morning in my shiny mohair suit. It was wicked, it was bad, it was a bad suit. <laughs> With my six inch bench boy, and my, my slip pocket, I'm a change pocket, two pockets on the right. One Christian brother said, 
What are you doing with so much bucket? On the teeth have so much bucket. <laughs> so I came to the convention and dress up. And one of my friends, I'll, I'll call him Tom, but his name wasn't Tom. <laughs> he came just up all rough, like he just drove a church van from London. <laughs> and everybody said, what's the matter with you, Tom? You're not looking cool. He said, well, you know, guys, I'm just a poor working man, and, you know, this is how things stay. So, and then after Sunday school, Tom disappeared. Nobody couldn't find Tom. I said, do you see Tom? Stop. Look in the toilet. See if you see Tom. Tom not in the toilet. Tom not in prayer. Tom not nowhere in this building. About, about just in time for morning service, Tom strolled up. <laughs> Tom had on a suit. Looks like he borrowed it from the angel outside the tomb. Shine. Shine. If you didn't recognize it, this last 10 minutes has been a total diversion. <laughs> what we're saying is this. God doesn't look specifically on the outside. Thank you, Jesus. And there are some of us who are hiding hurt and history under pretty clothes. Pain and suffering and personal depression on a nice frock and pretty ties. But inside, whoa. God's trying to reach you. To tell you he loves you. And the Bible says this, 1 Corinthians chapter 6, 19 and 20. Don't you know, I'm paraphrasing, that your body is the temple of the Spirit of God. Therefore, worship him in your body, which belongs to him. Listen to what Paul said in Corinthians 2, 4, 7. Now you can understand why Paul said so much about the body in Corinthians. It's a bad city. You know something? Your environment touches your theology. Your environment informs your Christian practice. More than you know, I wish you'd gone to the who's pulling your strings workshop. Because the environment we live in seep into us. And this was true in Corinth. Paul had to stand up strong and say, your body must not be desecrated because it does not belong to you. You are the janitor. You're not even paying rent. Your job is to sweep it. Make sure it's kept clean for his habitation. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. And Paul said this, we have this treasure in jars of clay, earthen vessels, so that the excellency may be of God and not of us. What a paradox of the kingdom. Treasure in jars. Did you ever hear about the Dead Sea Scrolls? Some of the most important documents found earlier this century. Do you know where they found it? A little shepherd boy found it in an old jar. Something quite peculiar happened in Sotheby's last year. Under the auctioner's hammer, they sold a silver Turkish tray for 3,000 pounds. Beautiful piece of antique. You know where it came from? 
It came from the house of a man who had it in his house, in his living room, for as long as he could remember, using it as ashtray. Does your life feel a bit like that? Putting dead ends in your, in your life all the time? When God wants to tell you, you are precious. Inside, precious. You're stopping out rubbish. I think God's going to do a work here tonight. God wants you to know this, that irrespective of your views about your body, he has, maybe he has a very different one. Especially as we got the keep fit, the keep fit culture. Hmm? All the fellows want to look like V's. want a shape out of place everywhere a shape should be a shape must be and where there should not be a shape be it not so <laughs> but whether your body looks like a balloon or a banana Amen. It's a temple of God. Work on it if you have to. Run around the block. Drink the poisonous keep fit stuff. But realize when you're through either pampering it or pulping or, or, or beating it, it's a temple. For Jesus is in you. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Another illustration people in my land may have heard too often. You know, some of us are, uh, it's like when you go to somebody's house and you can only go in certain rooms. <laughs> you know those kind of homes? You ring the doorbell. Ding dong. <laughs> Hello, Jennifer. Hello. Oh, follow me. <laughs> and they stick you in the lounge after they open it. <laughs> <laughs> Melvin, have you seen the keys to the lounge? One minute, Jennifer. And you get in the lounge and that is where you stay. You don't know what the bedroom color looks like. And you've been going there 15 years. <laughs> and your, your excursion is to the loo and the kitchen. That's the high spot of your visit to this person. You never see the rest. You don't know even if they, if they have bed. mentioned it was the antechamber the little room by the side don't bother with the bedroom leave my sexuality alone don't bother with my future plans that's tomorrow's message God wants to fill the whole of us because God is at work even within our bodies 
in Galatians 2.20. The life I now live in the flesh, in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Romans 12 verse 1. I beseech you therefore by the mercies of God to present Come on, young lady. Come on, Christian young lady. Come on, young man. You want to present your bodies as a living. You don't want it dead. Living sacrifice. Holy and acceptable unto God. For some lives are not entirely acceptable unto God. You know what we say? God can use anybody, but he don't necessarily work with anybody. He can use you anytime, but he don't work with you all the time, unless you know about presenting your body. Because Jesus wants to be at work in us. It's nice when the scripture talks to us about Christ in us. The hope of glory, isn't it? It's also nice when the Bible speaks about we are in him. I prefer that one. When the Bible says we are in him, it's safer. You see, that's passive, isn't it? We recline in him. It's secure. It's comforting. It's consoling, but that's not what we're talking tonight. Christ in you is Christ active. Christ vibrant. Christ at work. Christ delivering. Christ manifesting himself through you in your body. Because you see, the kingdom of Christ is from within. God's kingdom can't wait for you to get another body. Amen. It's what you got now that Jesus wants to inhabit. Oh God. Oh Labarostera Maundere Ekestaya. And to use for his glory just as you are now just as I am without one plea but that your blood was shed for me since you bid me come I come it's the same you at the cross God will take and cleanse and use you Thank you, God. Thank you, God. And you know how Jesus dwells in us? He does it by the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. That's what Paul said. I pray that out of his glorious riches, he may strengthen you with power through his Spirit. In your inner being. Oh God, I worship you. Thank you, Jesus. Oh God, just wave your hands and give. So the Spirit works in us by indwelling. You see, let's clear it up. When you get saved, you only get saved, as Reverend Robinson reminded us yesterday in question time, through the Spirit bringing conviction and conversion. Everybody who becomes a Christian becomes a person in whom the Holy Spirit dwells. 
Don't let nobody from nowhere tell you that if you're not yet baptized in the Holy Spirit speaking in tongues, you may go to hell. That is not from Bible. And tell us all kind of stuff about, oh, something is wrong with you. You must be terribly nasty. And ooh, God must really want to do ooh. Yuck. Some of you come to receive the Holy Spirit and you know why you can't receive it? You're too tense. You're still thinking you have to work something up and work something up and say No, not really you know. You mean if I promise you something and I said to you come tomorrow morning nine o'clock upper room <laughs> And I'll give you. You mean you have to come to me and say, oh, Pastor Joe, take him, 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 No! That wasn't why you got filled. You didn't get baptized in the Holy Spirit because your tongue chip up. You know when you got it? You got him when you reached either a state of abject desperation. And you begun to reach the point where you just got so fed up, you just, you just threw yourself on God. Bang. Amen. Anybody who is saved, if the blood touches you, the spirit can fill you. Thank you, God. So he comes to us by his indwelling. He dwells in us. Saving us and dwells in. If you don't have the Holy Spirit in him, in you, you are none of his. That's what the Bible says in Romans. For his spirit calls out to our spirit. And by him we cry, Daddy. Woo Thank you, Jesus. You may have grown up in some government institution and didn't know your mommy and your pappy. But when the spirit comes to dwell, you can look up. <laughs> Woo! And say, Daddy. That's the indwelling. But the spirit also comes with enduing. It's a different subject now. Amen. That means a clothing upon for service. But it also means an overflowing off for service. You know what Jesus said? On the last day of the feast, in the book of John, when everybody would have been tired of the sight of Liquid. Jesus said, if any man first, <laughs> let him come unto me and drink. And but that's funny. When I drink water, I do it like this. You've seen me, haven't you? Jesus said, this drinking, you drink from down here. Belly button. You drink from your belly button. Oh yeah. Out of his belly shall flow. A, a little stream. A stagnant water. Oh, God. I want to say this to some of you who have not yet received this enduring. It's not as far as you think. I have to apologize on behalf of people like me who have given you the impression that it's hard work. And it's holy for fighting and fisticuff with God. And you have to wrestle for your blessing. 
You don't wrestle with God. When Jacob wrestled with God, he got his hip out of joint. His prevailing with God wasn't the fact that he grabbed hold of an angel. It was when he was honest. For a broken and a contrite heart, thou will not despise, O oh God. Lord. When you get broken before God and contrite and learn how to relax. Out of your belly. You see, you and I are so used to this idea of an aggressive invading God. That's a classical Pentecostal understanding of a I'm a classical Pentecostalist, by the way. I, I go back with the rest, the rest of everybody else. Like I might tell me, I'm there. Don't worry, you're all right. But some of the things we didn't get quite all that right. It's not that you have to stand in God's presence and force him to dwell. Jesus said, when I go, I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. You're going to know me better because what I'm going to give to you is water from inside. Lord Jesus, I feel God's presence in this place. Thank you, Jesus. And the enduring with power is as people learn to have two things. One is faith in God. One of the things I've enjoyed in ministry recently is people coming up to me and saying, Pastor, something funny is going on. I said, what? I said, well, I don't know. I said, it just feels a bit funny. I said, what? I said, well, you know, sometimes I'm just home. And it's never happened to me before, but no, I don't want to talk about it. It's a bit too embarrassing. I said, no, talk, talk. Nah, no, nah, it's, nah. Nah, it's all right. Nah. But what? What? What is this funny? Nah. It's this funny thing. I'm, I can be there and then suddenly from inside, it's like there's a language or there's a language just. <laughs> Where I go to church, there's some people who are speaking in tongues and nobody can tell exactly. Am I getting dangerous now? I can stay on the executive. All right, we preach them. Nobody can tell. Nobody had a stopwatch over their head. Some people speak in tongues, and I can't report it. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. What causes a man or a woman to experience? The enduring and the filling of the spirit is not working it up. It's working it out. Receiving it and expressing it out. Thank you, Jesus. Once upon a time, in the days of the prophets, in the days of the kings, they used to get oil. Oh, yes. Yes, yes, yes. And they would pour it on the head. It's okay. Man is dry. It would go all over Aaron's head. Down his beard. He wasn't church of God. He had a beard. Down his shoulders. <laughs> and all over his garment. Let me tell you the honest truth. When I was a little boy, I thought that was the most peculiar image. A man sitting there with oil dripping all over him. <laughs> with oil dripping all over him. But you get the message? He is soaked, saturated with oil, with gladness, with beauty, with resplendent glory, with authority to do the master's business. But here comes 
the secret of the kingdom. God doesn't want to pour it on. He wants to pour it in. Jesus, I praise you. Jesus, I praise you. Paul said, here is the mystery of the ages. Christ. Oh, yeah. In you. The hope of glory. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. He sticks closer than a brother. This Jesus. He's closer than your best friend. This Jesus. He comes with a quality of oil and an anointing which doesn't stay on the outside but gets you on the inside. Woo! Chloe. 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 The psalmist caught a glimpse of the New Testament theology. Oh, God, I praise you tonight. You anointed my head with oil. Woo! My cup. My cup. My cup. Oh, runs over. Thank you, Jesus. Ore <laughs> Ibra son de la Mesia, inda la masu, i coria san la malasha, uno lo mosi, i che era la masan la masu, u che te la barastano, ibro, ida la barosi, shanda la masuka, glory in Jesus, in the sacred la oshe. He said, la 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 Sole <laughs> Shinda la maroste, anda la bakuste, uriando lo bossa, si le canda la maroste, usta la maroste, i che la so enda ando oshe, u che la va osse enda le veshi, i cala boste anda la, u che cola bossi, i se la mahoshe mai, lo molo se kai, lo male che enda le veshi esce andai, ure la maroste, che enda la mashando, praise him, praise him. Come on, church, just worship your God. Hallelujah. Hey, oh, I can't have a seed. Show la my Sunday, I can't die. Who let the messy can die? See that old she can die. We all can have a seed. Who the number of seed can die? She broke the shine. Hundolo, Hundolo, Hundolo. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Let the church praise God. Let the church worship Him. Come on, people. You are in the presence of God, the presence of the fountain. 
fountain of life he said drink of me drink of me you will not thirst again oh oh he kiss and the low shake a sandaya who black was still a machine go he can have a rust and the machine let my people praise me. Let my people praise me. Let my people worship. Come into the sanctuary of your inner self and worship me. And I will bless you, says the Lord. For I am the God. I am your Lord. I am the fountain of life. I am the water. I am the bread. I am your God. I am your provider. I baptize and I baptize and I anoint. Oh, Hallelujah. Come on, church. Don't stand back and look. Don't stand back and look. Go with the flow. Go with the flow. Go with the flow. Christ in you! Christ in you! Christ in you! Christ in you! The hope of glory! Angels don't know this! Angels don't know this! Whoa, whoa, whoa. Angels don't know this! Christ in you! Christ in you! In your weakness! Christ makes you strong. In your thirstiness, he waters you. Christ in you. We're not working anything up. We're not whipping up emotions. We are going with the flow. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. The Holy Spirit comes on the wings of praise. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Don't leave him on the outside. Don't leave him on the outside. Christ in you. Lord, I love you tonight. Lord, I praise you. Lord, I praise you. Lord, I praise you. Spirit of God. Spirit of God. Jesus, our Lord. Fall again. Oh, God. Thank you, Jesus. Worshipping, you just stay right there in the spirit. 
glory. You don't know Jesus. He wants you to come. He wants you to come. You're sitting next to somebody that don't know Jesus. Maybe they just need an encouraging hand. Just a gentle voice and a gentle prompting. You hear? Come on now. Jesus wants you. Jesus wants you. Jesus wants you. Hallelujah. Our next door to call is for anybody, really. You want to know God's infilling, indwelling. You know maybe your heart, your life needs a little cleaning up. Please don't stand back and be afraid or ashamed. Maybe some of the things the preacher was saying really hit you hard and you feel, oh my God, that sounds like me. This is a good time to come. Maybe you want the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Don't come standing and looking and wondering. Just come worshiping. Maybe you don't even have to ask. Just come and praise it. Come on. You need healing inside yourself? Come on, now is your time. Thank you, God. God is at work in this place. God is at work in this place. God is at work in this place. Young adults, I've got a special word for you from the Lord. Told me to tell you that your time has come. You hear me? He said the fathers, many of you are here with us today, have fought an excellent fight. They're not going out to dress. They're still not here today. The job they have done, many of us have never had that much because of their commitment to the quality of their service. Many of you have seen the service of God for a long time. But God wants to let you know that He says your time is here. He wants to raise you up. Oh, yeah. Did you hear the people? God wants you to know that there are other things He can do in you as beautiful, as strong as the singing you did tonight. Your time is here. Oh, God, I'm going to start. He's looking for some pastors. Oh, the motion. He's looking for some lives he can fill and use in your workplace, in the office. He's looking for some people he can baptize and endure who will be effective on the shop floor. Yes, God. Oh. Folks, let's not quench the spirit. I feel you kind of holding back. I don't know why. Amen. 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 Young men, you got to know that God wants some of you guys to stop posing and get into business. Boy. Work to do, work to do. There's work to do. Thank you, Jesus. Some young ladies, I know you have some agendas, but God has said your time is here. Work to do. Work to do. Father, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Oh God. Church, I just feel like God is so. You know what? In this atmosphere, dead people can get up and walk. I am serious. Blind eyes can be opened. Oh God, believe it, anything is possible, oh God, anything is possible tonight. Father, in Jesus' name, we take authority, we bind every spirit of interference, in the name of Jesus. Oh God, Lord, now let your word take effect on your church. Jesus, as you dwell in us, 
in the name of Jesus. 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 Oh, I'm gonna handle when I feel God's presence here. Lord, this is powerful. Lord, this is powerful. Lord, this is powerful. Lord. Lord. Amen, amen, amen. 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 We're not waiting because we're lost. We're waiting because we're waiting. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Pastors, help me pray. Ministers, let's travail here. Let's bring birth to come. Let's bring birth tonight. Let's bring birth tonight. Jesus. 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 Say Jesus. Jesus. Say Jesus. Jesus. Say Jesus. Jesus. Oh, God is at work. God is at work. That's the A A A. Thank you, Jesus. It is very evident that God is in this building. And even right now amongst his people, is performing his work. What we need to do is to recognize that God is really at work amongst us. I call on every believer in this building who names the name of Jesus Christ to rise to your feet right now and to claim that which rightfully belongs to you Take authority in this meeting now in the name of Jesus Christ and that which is rightfully yours receive it from the Lord Jesus Christ. We have requests today for people who are sick. There are individuals who believe that even multiple sclerosis can be healed. We are having requests left, right and center. People are believing that the God we are serving is able to do something. Claim the authority in the name of Jesus Christ. The Holy Ghost is here. You need the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Just believe God right now. Claim the authority. Claim the authority. Claim the authority.
We're gonna we're gonna continue worshiping. I just feel led to pray a very special prayer of deliverance. I just feel the Lord whispering to me that there are folks around, maybe some at the altar, maybe some still around the place, who are struggling with some of these things inside of yourself. There may be that after church is over, you will you need to see the counselors over on our left. Don't forget, please, for prayerful solid Christian counseling but I feel the Lord whispering inside of me and saying right now he wants to do a very deliberate work of releasing bound lives so even right now there are folks who can't enter in because you're even doing video replays of things that have happened in you or to you God wants to just let you know that you're extremely precious. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you for your grace, which is sufficient. And we thank you for the deep work of your spirit now. Lord, there's some bad memories around this place. There are some serious memories. Their hearts broken. But I pray in the name of Jesus, right now, you would do a work of healing. Satan, you've been holding some people down. You've caused them to despair. But in Jesus' name, we bind your work in their lives. And we speak the liberty of the grace of God, which makes us whole. Amen. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. You send your word to heal us. Let that healing be now. In Jesus, in Jesus, in Jesus' name. Now just let it go. Just let it go. Just let it go. Just let it go. In the name of Jesus, just let it go. Right now, in Jesus' name. Be set free in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Jesus said, You are clean because of the words I have spoken to you. Amen. Let it go. Let it go. Let it go on the balcony. Let it go. Let it go. In the name of Jesus. Oh, it's a gentle work. It's a gentle breeze. Yes. It's a gentle breeze. It's just wafting through some spirits. I feel it. I feel it. I know it. I know it. Oh, yes. Yes, and the Lord says you're not all young people either. It's not just young people. Oh! Amen. Jesus' name. Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. Can you feel the river? Hey! hey. Can you feel the river? Silent water run deep. Yes. Yes. 